August is one of the worst times in the garden, I think, for us down here in Georgia, just because it's really too hot to plant anything, except we need to start getting our fall garden in. Um, the summer garden at this point has mostly petered out, except for a few tomato bushes that are trying to hang on and fight for life. Um, and I'm trying to just fight the bugs, fight the heat. I think the heat index for today is supposed to be 105. And that's not horrible if you compare it to places like Vegas and stuff like that. But our humidity index today is 97%. Um, so the humidity actually takes its toll, I think, more than the heat does. When I'm thinking about the things that are in our garden now, um, things we're trying to get ready. And so August is just a hard month. And if you are struggling right now in your garden, I absolutely feel you. This year has been a year unlike any other for us. And, you know, it's just been an adjustment. But I haven't done a garden tour in a while and things have changed in the garden. We have been pulling plants that have died. Uh, most of our tomatoes are gone at this point. We've been trying to start some of our fall plants, um, our greens, and trying to get some carrots planted. I'm struggling with those right now. I'm not sure if my seed has just gone bad or it's just the heat. Carrots are kind of finicky um, to get started. But I wanted to walk you guys through the garden today, show you what's going on, and show you how we are getting ready to get to fall, hopefully. Um, so let's go take a look. So like I said, we are in that transitional phase of our garden, taking it from summer stuff to fall stuff. So in this box here, I have collards in these two rows. Um, I got some local seed and it has just come up amazingly and I'm so happy with it. And then over here, I planted some kale seeds. These were seeds from last year and they didn't really do great with their germination, but I did get some. So um, I'm just waiting to see if I need to plant some more or if that's gonna be enough. So I've got three rows of kale in here and all of this will end up getting thinned out. And I will, instead of tossing these plants, these seedlings that I pull, I am reserving other rows in the garden to plant those. So, and you'll see that kind of as we go along further. Back here, I have another round of green beans. These should start flowering soon. And then all around the edge of that box there, I have planted carrots. And again, these were last year's seeds. I'm not having a whole bunch of luck with those. So I'm just waiting. I'm gonna give it another week and then I'll see if I need to replant there. And then I also did plant carrots around the edge of this box and they were newer seeds. And so I'm gonna show you, they are starting to come up. So all these little bitty things are carrots. So these might have to get thinned, but I'm really going to try not to. And then you'll see I have some random sunflowers and cucumbers that are popping up from where we had some of our chickens in here living for a while. They have been rehomed. Um, and so I am just leaving those plants for right now because I don't know, I've never planted cucumbers this late, but it might work out to be a really stellar thing. So I'm leaving it and we're going to find out. This box, I planted um, the same carrots that I planted in the other box, the ones that aren't really germinating really well. So these are going to get another week and then I'm going to replant these with the newer carrot seeds. I just always try to use up my oldest seed first. It doesn't always work out well, but I try. And then these two boxes here, they have sweet potatoes on either side. That one had a random basil plant that popped up. It's doing great. Um, I planted sweet potatoes on either side of this. You can see my vines are vining beautifully. Um, that zinnia plant is still going strong. So I am just absolutely leaving it. It is gorgeous. It has some of the prettiest flowers. 
um, some random asparagus. I will eventually put more carrots in this box and this box, but I'm trying to stagger my planting so that I can stagger my harvest as well. So once um, the cucumbers and stuff got pulled from these boxes and the squash plants got pulled from this box, I added in a huge load of chicken manure and um, just I like cleaned out their run and everything, which is just like basically pre-composted um, and dumped that in there. So I'm just letting it work and then I will kind of um, break it down and smooth it out and then I will add some carrots there. Um, okay, back over here. Oh, I'm really excited about this one. So before we put the deer fencing up, this actually was a pathway to enter the garden. And now that I've had to put the fencing up and block it off, my husband had the great idea that we could actually turn it into a plantable space. So I spent yesterday in the 100 degree heat to pull this plastic up and I reused that in other areas of the garden. And um, I'm going to add compost in here over the winter time and such like that. And then our plan is to actually get some of those cattle panels and make an arch and I will be able to grow cucumbers or vining something or other here. Um, and then, so I'll plant those along the edges and then in the middle, I'll be able to grow hopefully lettuce throughout the summer because the cucumber vines or the sweet potato vines, whatever I decide to put here will provide some shade. So I'm really excited to be able to extend the garden without even really like having to extend it. Um, so this plastic is going to get used somewhere else and I will show you that in a little bit. The cinder block box, as we refer to it, has sweet potatoes in it. There's a few like rogue bean plants, one super special zinnia that's popped up. Couple, the strawberries that were planted in the spring, those are still doing really good. They bounced back from the deer when it, they mowed them down. Um, these strawberries that I just transplanted recently um, are looking terrible. And quite frankly, I do this every year. I am bored in like July and August because there's not a whole lot I can do. And so I start trying to dig things up and replant them and it's really too hot and I end up killing things. So maybe next year I'll learn not to, probably not. But um, eventually my goal is to get strawberries all down this side and then fill in all that side too, because it's really a great place to put strawberries. If you don't have a ton of space for strawberries to like spread and go, this cinder block method I'm loving because it keeps everything contained. The fruit tends to hang down off the side of the cinder blocks. So you're not having to like dig for it and it's get, it gets less buggy. Um, so I really recommend like getting some cinder blocks. And it's just also another way to like do double duty with your grow space instead of using wood for boxes you can get really more planting space essentially um and then we have like the random pumpkin that's just i don't know what it's doing it's doing its thing i'm kind of letting it go it hasn't put a pumpkin on it yet and if it doesn't put one on there soon i'll probably end up pulling it just because it's kind of annoying to get around but I don't know for right now I'm just letting it go and we are gonna see what happens nothing is planted here I tried carrots again I think I had some old seed the jalapeno peppers are totally in love with this weather I think they're the only thing right now that's happy in this weather um, we got a huge bucket of peppers yesterday or two days ago so I just got those processed today um, but you can see here we'll just go down the row um, here is where I have put all that plastic and those wood chips. This was all grass yesterday. And so, um, my son came in, he weed eated it down for me. I used my 30% vinegar to spray the edges. And then I put down plastic and the wood chips from over where I'm making that new section. Um, the calendula is trying to come back. It's still looking really sad, but I am getting some blooms now. So that's awesome. And the fever few is really trying to, to live. It's, it's doing its best. Everything in this section is just, it's basil that is thriving. And then my tomatoes, as they are, they're just petering out. I'm just leaving them because I don't really have anything else to replace them with. Um, nothing that needs the fences 
to replace them with. But we have had a pretty bad infestation of leaf-footed bugs. And I don't, I don't see any on this plant right now to show you. But what I have been doing is anytime, as soon as these tomatoes start to turn, even just the barest hint of orange, I have been picking them so that the leaf-footed bugs aren't eating them and killing them for me. So um, as these kind of die out, you see I won't replant them. What I have done at their base is I have planted um, some tender sweet carrots. These are the longer carrots, but since these beds are pretty tall, I went ahead and tried for it. And then um, I planted some kale also. And I plant, you can see, I have some babies right there, baby kale seeds, I'm really excited. I plant the Lacetino dinosaur kale is a lot, a lot of people will call it that. I find that is a better kale to plant just because it is, it's thicker. It holds up better when you're canning. It makes the best kale chips. It's not super flimsy and um, it doesn't like fall apart easy. So that's my favorite kind. Um, so I have carrots on one side, kale on the other. Carrots on one side, kale on the other. Carrots on one side, kale on the other. That's what I did for these three rows. Um, because the soil was deep enough, I felt like I could try some carrots here. Um, let's see, more basil. Some kale that is on this side. This row is currently empty. Um, this will be where I transplant some of those collard seedlings that come up. And also if I have to thin out any of my kale, I've got rows that, let's see, there's one there. Um, this row has like a lone bean in it, that row. So any rows that I don't have seedlings in, I'm saving and those will end up being where I plant beans or not beans. Oh my goodness. The collard or the kale seedlings as I thin them out. Our pumpkins are going crazy, which I sort of knew they would. That's why they're back here. Um, and you can see I have a few that are starting. So I'm really excited. Um, this one is a Jardale pumpkin. I think that's how you say it. Those are like the really pretty blue ones. And then, let's see. Oh, over here. Hold on, I kind of got to work my way through here so that I don't step on anything. Over here, these are the fairy tale pumpkins. These ones are like a pale orange. Um, and then they get, it looks almost like a white film on it. And they're so pretty. They're just like a creamy orange color. And those are really good for caning. And so are the Jardales. And then back here I have, oh, Kevin's, um, well, I think he's done for. Dang it. Kevin's jack-o'-lantern pumpkins. He really wanted us to try to grow them and we're just really struggling. So I don't know. That one's done so. Once they get a hole in it, like they're trash. So I'll feed it to the chickens. But well, hopefully we'll get another one. It's just August. I'm trying to be positive. It's been a hard year for everything. Um, back here are like purple hole peas basically is kind of, I don't know exactly what they are. They were seeds given to me. Um, by my friend's grandfather from his garden. And he's just, he grows them every year and then he replants them. Um, so I'm trying these, they're doing really well, but they do attract wasps for some reason um, and like stingy bugs. So I'm glad they're back here by themselves. These I will harvest, I've grown them once before and I will harvest them and we eat them just like black eyed peas. Um, but next year I'm hoping to grow like a whole wall of them to also be able to use them for our chicken feed because I'm trying to find an alternative for corn. All right, over here, uh, we have the beginnings of our raspberry bed. The raspberries that I have will spread underground. They spread by rhizome. And my husband is very finicky about things that spread. So, we um, actually took this out of our old truck and we are fixing it up for my son. And so we decided that we were gonna get it repainted and we're gonna do a spray in bed liner on that one. So he cut this for me and we're going to build a box around it to then be able to plant the raspberries in to keep them contained back here, but also away from the deer. So that's the next 
project, probably. One of the next projects. I don't know. There's always projects. It's just, what did we work on today? We don't really have a list. We just do them all. Um, I've got some beans here, some beans here, and let's see what else. Sweet potatoes are here. These I put in actually really, really late, and I'm just trying to see if they'll do anything. I'm not 100% sure that they will, but the sweet potato that I was using to give me sweet potato vines just kept putting off more vines, and so I was like, all right, we're just going to try it. I love to try things in the garden. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I think it helps me stay open-minded to try new things in the garden because being a type A personality, um, I struggle a lot when things fail. And so kind of forcing myself to try new things helps me break that just a little bit. And then here, basically the same thing. I've got tomatoes dying out. I've got basil doing really well. And um, I planted some kale in a couple of these rows on the sides when I pulled the beans, it did not do very well, so I had to replant it. Um, so we're gonna see if that comes up, we'll see. Um, some calendula, my zucchini finally did peter out, the bugs did finally get to it, but man, we had a great year for zucchini, so I can't even complain about it. Um, I did throw some okra in, that's doing really well, and then I had like a random squash plant come up here and I've gotten a few squashes off of it, so I'm just leaving it. It's, I mean, it's doing okay, but you know, I'm just leaving it until it dies. So I just stepped in a fire ant bed and I'm gonna be honest with you, of everything this year that has been the worst, the fire ants, like I'm done. I'm done with them. Honestly, if I already hadn't started planting the fall stuff, I would probably come out here with like a flamethrower. I don't know, can you rent those? And I would just burn everything to the ground at this point because I've gotten bit so many times. I probably just got bit about 20 to 25 times. I absolutely just stepped in the middle of it, didn't even see it and didn't even realize it until I threw my phone down and ran out of my shoes because they were like covering my feet. So, sorry, just a little venting moment. I hate fire ants. I hate them all. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I, I have a, I have a thing like, seriously, Noah, we brought these, we brought these on the ark. Like you're, I don't know. I'm going to have to have a discussion with him. Hopefully if I ever make it to heaven, because, um, I have a, I have a short list of animals that should not have made it. And fire ants are definitely one of them. Okay. Back to your regularly scheduled programming. This is our urban flower garden. You guys have seen it this summer. Um, I actually ended up pulling a lot of the zinnias yesterday. Zinnias are, the only bad thing I can tell you about zinnias is they get this fungus. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it's called. Also, I really don't care, but it's annoying. And what it'll do is it will start on the leaves, but eventually it will work its way up and getting to getting to your blossoms. And of course, once we get to that point, um, it, I mean, there's just kind of no point to holding on to them. So what I did was I went through yesterday and I pulled the worst of the plants. I need to go ahead and pull this one, but I saved it cause I wanted to show you like what it will do. Um, so I pulled the worst of the plants yesterday the ones that were just completely eaten up. These ones are on their way out, but what I am trying, again, I am gonna try something new this fall, is I just replanted some zinnia seeds that I had in the holes. And so I'm hoping, since we're having this really nice warm weather, um, hot weather, that they will sprout and that I will be able to get another round of zinnias, hopefully, dealing with less of this fungus stuff because as we move into fall and the humidity starts to die down a little bit, I shouldn't have to deal with this quite as much. All right, and finally, the back next to the house. We got, we ended up moving, I ha bought this strawberry planter this year. It was on the back deck and they were just baking. So we decided to move it down here and I'm glad we did. They're doing so much better. Um, because they actually get some shade from, I don't know, about three o'clock on, whereas my back deck doesn't get shade until almost five. 
So these are doing well. And this system actually is gonna let me move this in my garage if I need to in the winter time, if it gets like too, too cold for them, or I can just cover them and keep them from the frost. And then I've got okra all here. It is doing really well. I need to come in and trim up these lower leaves. That's probably gonna be tomorrow or Tuesday's job. Um, so that I can, it signals the okra plant to grow taller and produce more by getting rid of these bottom leaves. Like you don't need these for anything. Um, and so you're just kind of taking energy away from the flowering part of the plant. So by trimming them, you're gonna get a better result. You're gonna get more okra. So I've got that. And then I also have, you can see in here, some collard seeds that I just kind of sprinkled them in like glitter and just bring, and we just are gonna see what comes up. So I'm really excited about that. Random zinnia, I leave them go. This area is kind of fenced in, a little wonky job because it's sort of what I had left, but the deer were coming and they were eating the okra. So I had to fence it off to protect the okra. So like I said, it's not super pretty, but it's effective. Um, and then finally, our last section here again, I've got some more okra. I've got some seeds that I've sprouted. Um, like that's an okra seed and that's all collard. So I'm gonna have so many collard plants. I'm really excited. I don't love collards, but my husband and my oldest son do. And so you can see, let me come under here so I can show you. You can see like we are going to have all the collard plants. Like I'm really excited about it um, because last year, we got hit really hard with a frost. And so I wasn't able, they didn't survive it. Like I only had a few plants that survived it. So I'm really excited that this year I will be able to hopefully have quite a bit more and I won't really have to ration them. I'll be able to let my husband and my son eat them as much as they want. So I hope that was informative. Like I said, we are in middle Georgia. We are in zone 8B. And so this is where we are at right now, trying to get all of those things started um, and then hopefully get them big enough where I can do some transplants um, and get all of my spaces kind of set up for our fall growing and then also harvesting. Our first frost date is later on. Typically it is like closer to early November. So hopefully by getting these things in now and getting them good and established, they will be able to withstand any early frost that we might have. Um, and then also later on as it gets into the winter, most of our plants do last, most of our fall plants, especially our greens, they do last through the winter um, and often on into the spring until we really get into the heat of um, late spring, early summer for us and the bugs come. Um, and because we don't use any pesticides, at that point, I will just pull things like collard plants and kale plants um, and feed them to the chickens. So I hope this was helpful. And if you guys haven't thought about starting your seeds for fall yet, now is a great time to do it. So we will check back in in a few weeks and show you how the garden has changed. You guys have a good day. We'll talk to you soon.